You know, just briefly, uh, want to give an opportunity to uh, all the panelists to describe what they do. Right? And uh, uh, so, starting with you, Abhinav. Yeah. Uh, at Lendo, we use non-traditional data uh, uh, to create scores for people who do not have scores, or to improve on existing data that is available. So, we use data from social, uh, including email, Facebook, Twitter. We use mobile. We use psychometric. Uh, we also kind of uh, use data from form filling analytics. We use wallet transaction data, e-commerce transaction data. And with our global partnership with FICO, we use credit bureau data also to build uh, and uh, bring the FICO score to India and also have a joint score with them. So that's what Lendo does. And Abhinav, you, were, you used to work with Sibyl earlier? Yes. OK, great. <laughs> so, now that you've clarified that. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Anybody wants to beat him up? <laughs> Feel free. After the panel, not, not, not right now. He's, he's yeah, yeah. civil, not me. Yeah, yeah. Get, um, get your tough <laughs> questions ready for him. I, so uh, what MoneyTap does is uh, it's India's first app-based credit line. What that means is that it's a very flexible banking product where the customer downloads the app. In about five to seven minutes, uh, we go through an entire sort of a chatbot-based interface. Uh, at the end of it, you qualify for a line of credit. It's a very flexible line of credit. Uh, you do the KYC on the app itself. And once you're onboarded with, a, with our partner bank or NBFC, um, you, you have a line of credit, let's say 3 lakhs. You can take as low as 3,000 rupees or as much as all your 3 lakhs. You can take it in multiple chunks, night or day, 24 by 7, bank holiday, whatever. And the money instantly gets wired into your bank account. And the meter starts ticking at that point. At the end of the month, you get one bill where you pay your uh, EMI for all the loans you've taken due that month. It's kind of it. And the payment also kind of happens in the app itself. Um, we are new, we only launched uh, a few months ago, and, uh, and our, uh, we are not a lender ourselves. We partner with banks and NBFCs too, to, who provide the capital. So Zest Money is a completely digital consumer lending platform, and what we specialize in is transactional credit. And that means we help our customers afford the things they want to improve their life today, and then they repay us over time. Uh, think about what Bajaj FinServe does offline. We take that online and completely digital. We work with a range of e-commerce partners today, and we are also now working with a few payments companies to help their customers fund their transactions real time. So, guys, we're talking about about uh, whether payment companies can monetize, you know, their flow of data uh, in any way in the lending model. So I think, I think you know, the first question, of course, Avina, is to you. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, payment companies think that the, rate, the data they have about the payment history of their customers is very rich. Would you pay for it? Uh, see, today, uh, with the technology which we have on the mobile going in an SDK, a lot of data is getting churned from the SMS. So uh, that data becomes very interesting when you start looking at customers' fund flow. And, and that really is a point where we have to kind of think is how valuable additional data from payments mm -hmm. is or how, how valuable the SMS is. So in India, typically, it can become a very interesting thought process is does really the payment data, is, is that valuable or not? Because there's a lot of chunk of that data sitting on the SMS of the customer. If you take the right consent and read that data set, you are, ha you are building a similar profile what typically mm -hmm. you That's would build. That's very, very interesting. You know, you're saying that Google is already killing the model of, of payment. So Bala, do you use SMS data as a part of your app? Or? We do. Uh, SMS has become kind of like a commodity now, table stakes. Right, table stakes. So yeah. I would be like, if I don't do SMS, I think I'll be like the odd man which, out which, <laughs> in this thing. Bala, interestingly, that means that you wouldn't even pay Lendo to, for their score, right? Not for, not for SMS data. Uh -huh. Okay. Social okay. is a different Very interesting. story. Interesting. Uh -huh. Um, but uh, I think getting the transaction data as an SMS at least okay. uh, is like table stakes. What the question is, that tells you a little bit about ability. Uh, the challenge in this country is intent. Uh, mm -hmm. Ability, there are n number of ways to evaluate right. it. Yeah. The intent is always the, always the question. It's a character question. Got it. Yeah. Let's see, uh, what's you, your view on, on what kind of scores? You know? For example, uh, you, uh, you have a good partnership with a, with a payments company, right? Yeah. Has it changed life for you? Yes and no. So I think it's not what data you have, it's what you do with it. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely we appreciate getting access to additional forms of data. 
but we believe that only we can learn from that and create the model that you need to effectively lend. Lending is an extremely risky, complicated business, mm -hmm. um, and just having the data is certainly not enough. And it takes time. It takes right. potentially right. years to learn from that data. Okay. So, you know, are we, are we sort of of the view that, that there is not much that payment companies can, you know, do in passively monetizing their, their data? They will have to do much more than just to say, you know what, I'll just pass on the data for a, for a fat fee. Will it work? Bala, what do you think? Will it work? Uh, no, uh, I don't think it'll work. I think they need help in collections. Mm -hmm. So that's where they can actually actively play a role. Because okay. they have the credit card, they have the net banking, they have, they're right there at the collection point. Right. And then I think it becomes very, very interesting for a number of lenders. Right. Right. And right. if they can innovate there, uh, I think it'll be a terrific thing so for the industry. Very interesting, Lizzie. You know, we, we've been talking about uh, monetization uh, uh, of data by the payment companies when, when, when the, the, the core service of payments is free, right? more or less free or even to that extent even, even subsidized. Right? Uh, uh, MasterCard and Visa you know, for years haven't been doing anything in form of monetization. I mean, have you heard of any examples where, where MasterCard, Visa or, or the other payment networks have done anything in terms of credit monetization? Not really. I mean, they, what they do is make themselves ubiquitous and therefore mm -hmm for a credit provider, they have to partner with them. And I think that's what payments companies in India need to develop, which is that partnership model um, where we can work together exactly as Bala said, well, yeah. fix the broken parts of the chain. Collections is a, a massive pain point. Right. Distribution is a massive pain point for lenders. And that's where payments companies can, can add value. Got it. And which, which, which you're basically saying is that then, then you don't get, if you are ubiquitous, you don't need to get paid for the credit part, but you will get paid for the payments part itself. Exactly. You know, in your experience, uh, uh, Abhinav, uh, at Sibyl, you know, did you see any interaction with the payments companies? I mean, you guys take banking data, right, right. For, for, for your credit scores. Right. But did you guys think of taking payments data for, no, for credit scores? Uh, so the, the thing with the Bureau is that it's pretty well defined in the CIC Act. Mm -hmm. The Act defines that the Bureau can take data only from the bank and insurance and telecom. Insurance and telecom has still not happened because their individual uh, regulators have not kind of allowed them and not allowed they don't them, yeah. share it. And, right. and obviously not telecom companies don't want to share it because mm -hmm. I think that's their biggest asset. Right. Uh, so no, so really we, the payments, uh, with the payments people, it really hasn't happened. And I don't think it can happen right now because the, the act doesn't allow that to happen. So I think that's more from a regulatory perspective when the government starts thinking like, all right, so how do I get more people included? And a lot of people who are using wallets and they have a lot of data coming in, can they do it from there? So that could be an interesting thought process where they get involved in that part of the business. So, you know, Bala, Lizzie, I, I want to discuss a little bit about the challenges of the lending business. You know, for a very long time, uh, last three years since uh, digital lending or, or big data-based lending has become a popular term in India, we've been sort of saying, you know, just, you, you just need a score. That's all you need to do as a lender, right? Uh, I want to understand from you, Bala, what do you think are the biggest challenges for you as a lender? You know, is it just the score or is things beyond that? Yeah, I think for us a score is almost like a commodity. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, okay. Are, I, I'm, okay, let me qualify. We are, a, we are a consumer unsecured company, right? Yeah. So if we are doing a, uh, you know, secured loan, that's a different business. If you're doing SME, right. it's a completely different game yeah. where the credit evaluation becomes complex. Mm -hmm. So for a consumer, it's fairly straightforward. The Sybil has got like most of the data. Right. Uh, and if you analyze the bank statements and the SMSs, you have pretty much everything else. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, everything else is kind of uh, icing on the top. You were saying that the sexy stuff is actually just a commodity? Um, uh, yeah, I don't think it's sexy. Uh, I think say, uh, it's not sexy. I mean, for, from our view. Oh, OK. Uh, okay. I think the That's hard right. part yeah. is, uh, is A, of course, getting the customer. OK. Right? But even that is not too hard because, you know, you're giving money at the end of the day, right? If you want yeah. to give money, yeah. you know, just yeah. stand out on the street and everybody will, yeah. like, walk up to yeah. you. All you need to do is give some subsidy, some discounts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think even, we don't even discount anything. You don't need to discount. We oh, okay. just, Very strange. just give money. Okay. <laughs> so okay. um, I think the uh, two big challenges, one is this whole onboarding business, mm -hmm. right? Mm. KYC, fraud check, all the checks that you have to do, mm. right? Make sure the guy is living where he's supposed to live, he's working where he's working, where he says he's working. So this is kind of like the nuts and bolt of it, which I think is, makes the whole thing very expensive. That's okay. one. And second, of course, like Lizzie pointed out, is collecting the money back. I mean, lending is an easy business, right? Collecting right. is hard. So okay. okay. Lizzie, what are your challenges as a lender? Yeah, so I'm, I 
think a bit differently. I do find a lot of value in uh, transaction data. Mm -hmm. We lend predominantly, or at least more than 50% of our customers are new to credit, so yeah. we don't get Sybil data. We rely heavily on how do they spend their money, what do they spend it on, where do they spend it, and with what frequency. So working with a payments partner is very, very valuable. But the best partnerships we have are far deeper than that. It's not just about data sharing. It's about working together to design a product for their customer that enables the best onboarding experience and the best collections experience for everybody. Uh, so very deep partnerships uh, that wouldn't work independently. Okay, okay. very interesting. Abhinav, any experiences from, from uh, Lindo uh, in India, outside India, where people have done a lot of innovation or had to do a lot of innovation beyond the credit score that you already provide to them? Yes, there has been. So uh, before I kind of get there, and I want to kind of uh, touch upon one point, and sure. I kind of uh, I will just made a little devil right stop upstart, right? So let me kind of put it put one more thing in perspective. Mm -hmm. India still most of the lending happens offline, mm -hmm. right? Let's talk about whatever talk about whatever we talk about digital. It's still about less than five percent which is happening, right? So that is where if you talk about monetizing data from payment companies, that is where probably there's a play there where today. Till the digital you know, explosion doesn't really go out and get all the customers there into the fold, that is where they can still monetize by working with banks and working with partners to pre-approve customers. Mm -hmm. right? And that is where the monetization can still happen. Okay. But if they wait for too long and this digital explosion that we see is happening and we, we regularly see more and more people going digital for the lending, that will be a too late a segment to wait for. So the time is now, the time is now, uh, right now to kind of go and start monetizing the data, try but, and do a lot more with the data. that's a short window of opportunity you're talking about. Yeah. Right? It's a very short window of opportunity, but opportunity exists right now. Okay. So okay. having, I mean, this just kind of, uh, you know, clearing my little bit of my, uh, you know, negative conscience sense which sure, I kind of came sure. out there. Sure. Uh, on, on terms of trying to do a lot of stuff, and the interesting thing that has happened, and uh, as he said, apart from the credit score, what really the challenge is, and I said, uh, is people are still offline. The biggest challenge is how do you get them online and get all this data, right? And banks are solving for it, right? So banks are solving for it in, in, in different ways. So for example, today, uh, if you apply for a bank loan in India uh, and you get an SMS, you know, to verify yourself, click on a link and verify yourself. And that's where banks acquire a little additional data on you to, to vet the information that you've given to the bank, right? Taking your consent, the consent is very important here. Take your consent, vet additional information, get more additional information to kind of process, give you a higher, higher loan amount or process a loan faster, and that's already happening. So that's why the, the window is shut. Apart from doing with this data, it, apart from credit, what banks have started using it for extensively for understanding the customer. You know, what does he buy? Where does he go? What does he do? In collections, understanding you know, who, who are the you know, key people in his network, build networks out of it. So for example, I am connected to Bala and Bala connected to Lizzie, and if I'm a good customer and the bank knows that, it's very easy to build networks around it, right? Yeah. And then the bank knows if Bala comes and asks for a loan, instantaneously you know he's connected to Abhinav who's good, and the chance of Bala being good is good. These are kind of innovations which are consistently happening. Banks are realizing that they need to innovate. And that is why I should say it's a little shorter window and to play on it and try and grow that out from there. Right. So, uh, again, I mentioned about uh, MasterCard and Visa not really bothering to do anything with, with, the, with the credit monetization or, or credit modeling or whatever, right? Uh, banks. Uh, banks probably are the biggest payments providers in the country, right. very clearly. Uh, and they are also lenders, by the way. They know how to lend. You know, they have a lot, huge lending book. They have access to very cheap money. So when do you think that the banks will start competing in your respective segments? When most of the online lenders today in India are very segment focused, right? which is a good idea, very, 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 very focused, very niche. But uh, when do you guys really worry that banks will? Today, I, I, I understand that many banks are actually very uh, working very closely with you guys. But do you expect them to compete at some point in time? Um, they might. I mean, it's one of those sort of uh, co-opetition things, right? They compete and cooperate at the same time. But the way I view it is like if I'm a startup and I can't compete with a bank's user experience and interface and responsiveness, I don't deserve to be a startup. Right. right? So we have to run faster. Uh, that's kind of... Right. Lizzie, what do you think? Are, yeah, are I banks think... gearing up for competition or they, they've already given they, this stuff um... to the startups? Yeah, they're, they're getting there on the UI front, actually. I think I slightly disagree. I think they're running faster than we expected. Um, mm -hmm. 
in terms of the technology that they're building. What they still don't want to do or are not moving fast on is pricing risk. So taking okay. the kind of non-traditional risk that many fintechs are happy to take, whether it's in SME, you know, short-term working capital, whether it's in our space, new to credit, young mm -hmm. consumers uh, that are not appealing to a bank in its, in its core segment. So I think, look, these markets are so big and vast that even if they were to run 10 times faster, there's so still a huge is opportunity. It, is it there, so you're saying that it is not the lack of uh, technical capability. Uh, it is probably their unwillingness to take maybe a risk or maybe a hit for a few quarters. Yeah, exactly. For, their for their time business. frame is different, right? So as yeah. a startup, we have a runway of a few years to build our credit model. Mm -hmm. And it's painful. We'll lose money some quarters, and, and that's okay. Hopefully, our VC investors will let us. Mm -hmm. But as a bank with quarterly earnings and even you know monthly reporting cycles internally, mm -hmm. Yeah. MPAs hurt, and so yeah. that's actually our secret yeah. advantage. Lizzie, good luck with that not having quarterly pressure, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I would really love to have your investors in some of my companies. <laughs> so, Bala, what, what do you think about, about you know, the long-term advantages that startups, online lending startups will have to build? I mean, today, of course, you know, these are niche areas, and, and like you said, a lot of your customers are actually having good civil scores, and which probably basically means that banks are not right now competing in your segment. But in the long run, what kind of advantages would you want to build? Yeah, so look, uh, I think it's a combination. Obviously, data and, and the data moat uh, is, is like a super important part of it. Um, but part of it is also innovating on the offering itself. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Everybody gives a loan, everybody yeah. gives a card, and this, they've right. been doing this for yeah. like right. donkey's right. years. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, as startups, we have to introduce new products, whether it's yeah. uh, no, you know, lending on a click of a button at the purchase or whatever, like what MoneyTap is doing or whatever anybody else is doing. Uh, I think there is so much room for innovation, and the penetration is 1%. I mean, this is like we're not even close. So that's honestly not at, like the top 10 worries that I have. Uh, banks. Very, very interesting, Bala. So you're sort of saying this is a product design business and not just a data business or a, or a technology business. Uh, sort, of, sort of make this seem like, like fashion, where, where your products are better, and which is why people, cause consumers will like it. Are we really in that phase of consumers preferring a specific product? Are we there yet in India? Uh, I, I was a little biased in this. That's our approach. Our no, approach I, is I like the approach, that. Yeah. Uh, and it's worked for us mm -hmm. so far. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, again, as I said, there is so much innovation to be done. You can almost pick any access. You can pick data, you can pick purchase financing, you can pick any almost dimension and innovate there because the penetration is so low. And that's the good part of all of this. Of course, right. getting it right. done is very, very hard. That's right. a different story. Very interesting. But I don't think there's an opportunity or a competition right. is the biggest problem. Right. Other than if you go to the super prime segment. Right. In the super prime, everybody's like beating each other right. brains right. out. Right. But when you go below that, I think the field right. is wide open. Abhinav, you want to talk about some interesting long-term uh, moats that, that companies have built in the lending business? So, uh, yeah. So, what they're really doing is now, see, uh, as new data keeps coming in, they are kind of combining it with their available data. So, what really the advantage they are gaining uh, over any, uh, you know, uh, what probably Bala and Lizzie are doing is they have that additional data set available with them. And they're combining it together. And that becomes extremely powerful. And that is something where uh, enabling or working with them becomes more interesting. So they are building that advantage which they have built, which they have built for so many years. They're now adding this to that. So that becomes extremely powerful. And that is something which will take any company who's starting out now much, much longer. That, that as she said, this pricing for risk and that ability to take risk with that more data will, will start increasing as, as, okay. as the time progresses. And that really is the catch up which, which every aggressive uh, new age lender needs to have uh, to go out and get it done. So okay. that's something which is which is very interesting, which is okay. which we see a long-term strategy so, there. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.